Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Creative Chit Chat. Creative Chit Chat. Featuring me, Becca. And me, Eugene, and we're the founders of Worker Bee Supply, a creative photography and videography studio in Toronto. This is episode two. That's true. We just said that. Oh my goodness. Well, it's the first episode. Welcome back. Welcome back. If you caught the last one, you knew, you know we were getting some new gear. And it's actually the first one being shot on our new camera. We've shot a couple very other fancy. YouTube videos on it, mm -hmm. but first you've been step, very impressed so far. Yeah, I mean, you let us know how does this look to you compared to the last episode. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments. But yeah, excited to dive in for the second month. Yeah. Can't believe it's already been a month since our last episode. Um, all the things we talked about seem so far away. I know, like a whole different world. But totally. Let me just grab this lip balm out of the way. Whoops. Ooh. What's been... Uh, okay, I'm ready. What's been going on with you? Should we just dive into the first segment? Let's do it. All right, let's find out. What's, what's happening? happening? All right, Beck, what's happening? Oh my goodness. Well, May flew by just like every month this year so far. Uh, a lot of in office work, I feel like. Yeah, a little like. bit of a quieter month yeah. in terms of shooting. I mean, there was like a lockdown phase change so i think that okay. sort of like delayed some work mm -hmm. i know a lot of people hoping to get portraits are waiting for haircuts if you're a photographer oh, yeah. and you have that problem let us know uh yeah i have like two or three people waiting on haircuts right now uh who would like to get some portraits done so yeah but that's just meant we got to spend more time in the office yeah. um catch up on a lot of work do a lot of post work we finished a bunch of projects mm -hmm. um Writing blog posts, which has been super important and enjoyable. Yeah. And that, getting a lot of old work out. Um, yeah, speaking yeah. of portraits, we just, uh, why don't you tell us about the last blog post we just put out? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, back at the beginning of the year, I photographed uh, a new friend. Uh, his name's Mohammed Asadula. Uh, and he's the founder of several companies. Uh, I believe he's even starting to build a new uh, business bank for Canadian small business owners and entrepreneurs. So it's very exciting. But yeah, we got to photograph Mohammed in a really beautiful studio in Liberty Village. And he brought several uh, different outfits and looks to the shoot, which was really exciting to work with. We, we worked with a makeup artist. And, and yeah, we just shot a variety of portraits, a, a new podcast artwork, like a yeah. uh, podcast thumbnail for him. And it was just really enjoyable. Yeah, so you can see all of the all of the pictures on the on the blog post, which we'll link in the description. Yeah, check it out. And then we also released a couple new YouTube videos as well, kind of tied to some older work uh, we did. Mm -hmm. So the first one is how to build product styling blocks. Yeah. Um, both these videos were actually related to different shoots, but for our client Milko, which is an alternative oh, yeah. milk brand. And so we needed a bunch of these kind of like nice, clean styling blocks, as you're seeing yeah. right now, for a video shoot with them. But, you know, it was peak lockdown, winter time when we were doing it, so we had to get scrappy and make our own. And actually stumbled onto a really easy technique and way to do it that you don't need too many tools, but you get really great results. And now we have a set of awesome styling blocks. So yeah. if you want to build your own, make sure you check out that video. Yeah, they turned out really pretty. Yeah. And then... D yeah i was just gonna say don't spray paint inside uh yeah. eugene spray painted them in our apartment bathroom and let's just say i was finding schitt's creek and moira rose extra funny at the time but um the other video we released was kind of like a shoot behind the scenes for a conceptual product photo we also did for milko mm -hmm. uh this was kind of like a high composite advertising image of a cluster of their products mm -hmm and we kind of took you through how to build a floating cluster. We took you on the kind of set to see how the shoot came together and then dove into post to show you all the editing that went into. So you can create your own product cluster photos. It's a really cool dynamic image. It's actually not that hard to pull off. You don't need a ton of specialized gear. All you need is a little bit of patience in Photoshop and getting a bit creative. So yeah, check out that video. Um, yeah, that's all the kind of new stuff on the channels. Yeah, I thought some more about a YouTube video I would like to make and wrote a bit more script. Uh, so yeah, that one's a year in the making and uh, hopefully be coming soon. Excellent. It's going to be good though, right? Well, what have you been, uh, what's been taking up your time? Uh, my own mind and procrastination, which I've been working on lately. So I was hoping um, to segue into 
Paddington. Oh, well, I wanted to talk about the watches. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So another fun shoot that we got to do uh, this past month was a little product shoot for a local company called um, Maker Watch Company. And this is super cool because this is run by two guys that I've known since elementary school, Justin and Nibbin. And I'll be honest, uh, back in the fall, I was just like, you know when, when you just like think about someone from elementary school and you're just like, what's like Nibbin up to? And you hit up LinkedIn and you're checking out all his businesses and what he studied and and you know all the things that he participated in in university, which was a lot. Well done, Nibbin. And uh, and you're like, oh, what's this like maker watch company? This is super cool. You go to their Instagram. You realize he's rust he's running it with uh, with Justin, and uh, you just you know send them a nice message and say amazing work because they do create these really beautiful, unique watch faces from uh, colorful acetate and uh, maple wood. Yeah. And they put and all other, sorts of other materials. Yeah, in there, yeah. like eyeshadow and sparkles. They do and custom stuff. ones. Yeah, really cool. And um, and I said, hey, if you guys ever need photography. Uh, let us know and you know that was back in the fall and this is the perfect example of you know things don't happen necessarily right away um, but that doesn't mean people aren't thinking about you so yeah. Nibbin eventually reached out to us or both of them reached out to us and and they had some new straps that they needed um, some product photography of uh, on white and then also some sort of like lifestyle images so I got to shoot those on the new camera yeah. which was really fun I think that was like the first professional shoot that we used the camera with and honestly the resolution on the Sony well, we'll dive into it a little oh, bit later oh that's later yeah. oh okay sorry yeah. um and uh yeah we just shot some really beautiful vibrant outdoor photos with the, yeah. with the watches it was really fun yeah a little some uh, fashion-y kind of, kind of vibe, which isn't usually our thing. So it's Yeah. Fun. So as those roll out, uh, you'll can also find them on the blog eventually, mm -hmm. but that kind of remind me, like, uh, we have a video about how to get your first freelance clients. Okay. And in that, I talk a bit about how so often the people, you know, and who know you like personally, yeah. whether, you know, it's a family member or someone you went to high school with 10 years ago or however many years ago, a lot more than that now. I haven't seen Nibbins since elementary school. Um, that's really how you get jobs often, you know, in absence of like your name being out there in the industry. So, yeah. you know, why not reach out to some people that you know that have companies and offer your services if you're a creator, because um, you never know. Yeah. And again, it might not be the right time today, but maybe in a week or in a month or in Six a year, uh, they'll be ready to go yeah. and they'll kind of think of you. Yeah, never be afraid to reach out. I'm also dealing with horrible allergies right now, so just mind my, my nasally voice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've also been watching a lot of awesome kind of like TV and movies mm -hmm. lately, and a few things that I think aren't on a lot of people's radars um, that we really wanted to kind of recommend you check out because yeah. we really enjoyed these two shows specifically, mm -hmm. and also a little film franchise that perhaps more of you know of. Yeah. But yeah, I'll start with the shows. They're both animated shows yeah. and I think we learned about both of these from tested which yeah, the is podcast tested um, yeah or this is this is just a test yeah on the YouTube channel tested Adam Savage tested one of our favorites it's, you know getting real specific right now um, but but yeah it was really great that we heard about these because I don't think we would have really given them a shot I haven't heard anyone mention them really yeah so which one do you want to talk about first so the first one we watched was is a kind of anime show called Invincible mm -hmm. and that's on Netflix I Amazon believe. Prime Amazon Prime um, I just assume everything on Amazon Prime is on Netflix I think okay. unfortunately but you know if you happen to have Amazon Prime uh, I'd highly highly recommend you watch it so what's the in your mind what's the kind of synopsis of Invisible without giving too much Invincible. away Invincible it's um, well it's a superhero surprisingly nobody invisible um, no, no, but, uh, so basically it's kind of like a coming of age superhero story. So, uh, Mark is the, uh, the teenager, the main character in the, in the series and his dad is a big time superhero, um, Omni-Man, I believe is his name. Yeah. And he's basically waiting to get his powers. He eventually does. And it's just about him sort of navigating this new superhero world, um, there is sort of a mystery involved in it as well. Uh, and this show is definitely not for kids because it's anime. It's can get very gory. Um, you know, 
by the end of the first episode, it was actually quite startling how gory it is if you're not used to watching anime. But I think one thing that really stood out... Yeah, wait for the end credit scenes. Yes, yes. The, the name of the title pops out, pops up throughout different times of, the, of each episode. Basically, when they're about to reference or say Invincible's name, instead of saying the word, it just cuts to the name of the show like a like a title card that gets bloodier with each episode i'm pretty sure so did you i don't want to give too much away but is there anything else no i think it's it? just like a really awesome cast yeah um the kind of dynamic between there's this like different teams of superheroes yes. you know that are sort of competing for the world's attention which is kind of interesting and um yeah, I, I like the blending of like the mystery, almost kind of like WandaVision, not like in terms of what it's about, but mm -hmm. kind of having that superhero action, but not, also like mystery involved yeah, in it. Yeah, not quite knowing what's going on. Yeah, I really love the cast. <laughs> um, just kind of like a lot of incredible comedians and just actors. Yeah, so we're talking Sandra O, oh, Mark Yoon, um, if I'm, sorry, Steven Yoon, not Mark is the character he plays. Uh, Jason um, Manzukis, uh, Gillian Jacobs, um, oh, Zachary Quinto, yeah. and um, Omni Man. I'm sure we're missing a lot of people. No, but, the, yeah. what's his name? Uh, the guy who plays basically like the the newspaper guy in all the Spider Man movies. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. What's his name? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, really recommend you checking out. Oh, the other amazing thing about it is yeah. it has a fantastic soundtrack. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking for some music to just jam out to, yeah. and get like kind of high energy, like into whatever you're doing, uh, we found it, it's not like an official one on Spotify, but there's a couple that people have created that seem to have all of the songs on there. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, really awesome. So check that out. And then the other show or movie, but also animated was, um, the Mitchells versus the machines and that's on Netflix. Oh. Um, I'm still thinking about that actor's name, by the way. And basically, it's kind of like an end-of-the-world adventure movie, yeah. but also like a family kind of like coming back together and finding themselves, bonding. Yeah. bonding uh, over a very the like ragtag family, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's so much to love about this movie, but the animation, I think, it's done by the producers and artists uh, who did... <laughs> Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, yeah. so that's by Sony Studios, um, and they also did the Lego movie. So like how I like to describe it is that you kind of take the animation style of Into the Spider-Verse and pair it with the chaotic random humor of the Lego movie. Yeah. Um, so a lot of sort of like graphics kind of popping up to help illustrate the scene. Yeah, or hand-drawn elements. Yeah, um, to really emphasize a joke, um, and just also some really great... Um, acting in it as well, like a lot of fun cameos by a ton of like uh, comedic actors. Um, and there is one, there's one scene with Conan O'Brien that I've watched numerous times that I totally love. And yeah, basically it's also has to do with our relationship to technology in particular, mm -hmm. our phones. Um, and it's just what happens when, um, a type of technology kind of takes over the world and everyone is captured except the Mitchells. So yeah. yeah, it's super fun. There's one scene that I've watched at least a dozen times and it features a very kind of popular and creepy toy from the nineties. Take your best guess in the comments below. And I've watched it so many times. Basically like I'm thinking just throughout this whole period, I, if, if something just brings me joy and makes me laugh or makes me smile or makes me dance, I'm just going to watch it or listen to it over and over and over again because it just makes me feel good. And this clip in this movie is, I've, I've moved on from it now. I've moved on from it now, but that's what's really resonated with me lately and was just giving me that little boost of happiness when I needed it. But it is hilarious. And the this movie was really is for enjoyable. More, yeah, like, yeah, or absolutely. you can watch it with a family. Yeah, it's super cute. It's a good time. Highly recommend it. Netflix. Yeah, one of my favorite. Not like I won't tell you the scene, but like when the mom goes super badass, like yeah. action hero. Um, I love that so much. I know. Yeah, she's great. That's Maya Rudolph, and she does an awesome job as a mom. So, final thing for this segment, I think uh, oh. we've been also watching. Something we've heard a lot about, quite the opposite from these two yeah. uh, shows or show movie. Just kind of like randomly though. And like, but like every kind of person from every world is like, this is the best. This is amazing. Yeah. You have to watch this. 
and that is Paddington and, and Paddington 2. Specifically. But yes. we watched both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you like expect everyone talking about it ahead of time? Like, did you have any notion of Paddington as a character going in too much? Uh, uh, well, I was definitely familiar with Paddington from being a kid. I think we had some of the books, I, but I didn't really like remember his whole story. Yeah. Um, and aside from him, like, was there being a TV British, show, like an animated TV show? There is like a recent um, I animated remember that TV more, show. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, very like kind of simple. Um, drawings and stuff but yeah this was uh just a super beautiful film like i would say the first one's very cute yeah. um and it's important to watch it as well because it gets you acquainted with his origin story there's several jokes that are repeated in the second film so you have to kind of understand that reference you get introduced to a lot of the characters who play a role in the second one as well so don't skip over that um also just the the motion capture and cgi of paddington it's really beautiful yeah is incredible uh because of the motion capture they the ben winshaw does his voice but they also did like the mapping of his face mm -hmm. so all the expressions are incredibly realistic the fur is so beautiful it's, um, cl it's clearly like an animated character you know they're yeah. not trying to make you think it's a real bear, bear. Disney. um but at the same time, like it's totally believable that yeah. this bear is in this world and everyone's kind of like takes him seriously. Yeah, because it's a CGI bear in real yeah. life. Um, but the second one in it's particular. It's kind of like a fish out of water story. Yes. Um, and, and a you lot also of like hijinks. Kind of related to him to being like a Mr. Bean type. Yeah. So he's like a little clumsy, but he always means well. Um, so he gets into these situations where things get like a little tangled up. Yeah. Um, or a little messy. Um, but often end up for the better. Yes, because everyone loves Paddington in the end. But we heard like just Paddington Two was particularly good, and it has a like it has a one hundred percent Rotten Tomato score. The other one has ninety seven, so very close. And I think with the second one, it's just more sort of thrilling. And yeah. there is there's a mystery in the first one, but I think it's a bit more. Um, fun in the second one because the audience knows like what's like, happening it, yeah you're yeah in you're the... in on the mystery and so you're tr kind of watching the main characters figure right. it out and there's also really beautiful um like art direction and set design and and costume design in this film hugh grant um is in the second film and he steals the show he's just amazing in it um but we really enjoyed it it's yeah. so cute it's great. Awesome. Brendan Gleeson. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's what we've been watching. We'd love to know what you've been watching, yeah. what you're listening to, what you're enjoying. Let us know down in the comments below. But without further ado, why don't we jump off the deep end? So I thought it would be fun to talk. Like at the beginning, we mentioned that, you know, we just got a new camera system and the system we actually switch systems completely so both of us have been shooting on canon for a while and we're we moved to sony for both photo and video so we were shooting yeah. canon for our photo cameras and we're shooting uh gh5 panasonic, panasonic gh5 for our video camera and then occasionally renting cameras we rented the sony we rented canon r5 um but First of all, I thought it'd be curious, like, what were the camera systems that you've used throughout your kind of like photo life? Um, what was your first camera that you felt was really like, oh, this is my camera? Right. Uh, maybe like your first DSLR doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. be just any point and shoot camera, but your first like kind of real camera, let's call it. I don't know. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, my real first real camera was the Canon 30D, um, which I got in towards the end of high school. So 2007, the first half first half of 2007 and it's funny because like I don't have like a lot of strong like memories attached to that camera I used it a little bit like throughout university but mm -hmm. I shot a lot of film like I really liked shooting film uh on like medium format on my Hasselblad so it, it wasn't like a big part of of what I did in university um and then soon after graduating in 2012 I then got the uh, Canon 5D Mark III, cool, which yeah. became a much bigger part of my life. 
And I, I really didn't shoot that much film, but I had some point and shoot. I think it was actually like a Canon point and shoot for a while. But um, the first kind of DSLR I got was a Nikon D70S. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that definitely was a big deal. It was like, you know, like it wasn't like a silver plastic yeah. little like <laughs> camera yeah. when you turn it on. Um, and I even remember like I had a photography teacher that uh, was really great in high school. And someone had told him that I had gotten this camera and like it was that I had brought it to school. So he like, I was in class and we were doing some work in class and he like knocked on the door and told the teacher he needed to see me uh, just so he could check out the camera. <laughs> so were you shooting mostly digital in your photo class? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We did a course where, or we did a assignment where we would kind of like process our film and stuff like mm -hmm. that, uh, like black and white. But it was... Uh, I guess it was between that and Comtech, but yeah, I think we could shoot oh, okay. whatever That's we so wanted. Um, so, and I shot on that camera right through, I guess, like into university. And then midway through university, I got a D300, I believe. Oh, okay. um, so I shot on that for like the majority of school and kind of like the start of my professional work. And then eventually... It was like switching from Nikon was like a big deal. Um, and I switched to the Canon 5D Mark III, which a lot of people yeah. were switching to at the time because of its video capabilities. Right. And You right, got yours like a year after me. Yeah, right until this day, we had the, both our Canon 5D Mark III's and would use them as our B cameras or just like a backup camera. Or yeah. when you were shooting weddings, you'd use it as your, I guess your B camera in that yeah. case. Because we eventually got the Mark IV. Mark IV, yeah. That we kind of shared. We got yeah. one of them. Um, and then when we started doing more video, we kind of, I wanted a, a few different features. So we ended up getting the Panasonic GH5. Um, and that's what we've been using for a couple of years now. Um, and it's been a really great setup, but I think over the last while, a lot of new cameras were released. Mm -hmm. and oh my God, yeah. We've gotten much better and we're doing video on like a much higher level now. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like I wanted a new, you know, you can always rent a camera when you kind of like need it for a very specific job. Mm -hmm. But for our kind of like day-to-day go-to camera, obviously we shoot YouTube videos in addition to our videos for clients. Um, we wanted new gear. Mm -hmm. So the search began and there was like endless cameras coming out across the last year. And my colleague, our colleague Arash and I would talk all the time about which one to get. Almost every day for uh, months. From, is it the R5? Is it the C70? Is it the FX6? Is it the, you know... Lumix S1, um, we went in circles and circles and then one thing, yeah, so I guess maybe let's pause it there. And I think there's a few things, uh, we don't have to get into like super detailed, but outside, why were you like excited to get a new camera and switch? Uh, well, I was always very happy shooting with the, um, with the Mark IV, the Canon Mark IV. They're just really beautiful images. Like mm -hmm. I think for us switching to the, from the three to the four mm -hmm. was like the dynamic range and everything was yeah. beautiful. So we both loved it a lot. Yeah. And that was really great for like weddings in particular, because, um, when you're shooting a wedding, you're shooting all throughout the day. So you can be shooting sort of portraits, um, you know, in the middle of the day when the sun's really bright. So to be able to bring in those highlights quite a bit or bring up the shadows was so helpful. Um, or if you're shooting sort of a reception or the tables with, you know, with all the flowers and the decor on them before the, before the aud audience, before the guests move in, you're just shooting the reception room and it's very dim having that wonderful dynamic range and also had very high ISO without it being super grainy was also very useful. That was so detailed, but yeah, it was really awesome to use. Um, but one of the issues that started to become incredibly apparent over the past so many years was we had a lot of focusing issues with it. And that was just getting really kind of stressful and bothersome to deal with. Um, cause I said to Eugene, you could go into a shoot with like the best intentions and you, you're going to like, I'm going to hit focus. We're going to do it. And you'd just come back, um, with out of focus images. I think that's like, you know, uh, when it hit focus is like super beautiful yeah. and extremely sharp. You know, we use the Sigma art lenses, which are also gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, but like just the focusing system on DSLR cameras kind of so, sort of reached its peak and okay. in trickier conditions or when shooting super shallow, when the subject's small in the frame and kind of further away, oh, yeah. um, 
you could just like you know if you miss it by a little bit you get like the it chicken would focus or the, the ear, ear the or the line. nose yeah. um so it was just hard to get it super consistent um shooting product or interiors kind of no, no issue yeah at all Manual anything on a tripod part, yeah. yeah but it was the kind of like moving kind of shooting quickly uh where you just we both felt like often we'd kind of come away with only like half the images being usable per yeah, se. Yeah, and sometimes like if you were shooting like a portrait or a headshot, like it would just like not want to focus at all. And one like little tactic that I learned was like you just have to physically like take a step back or a step forward, which was like fine. It would like hit focus, but like if you were really attached to that crop, it was always like a tiny bit bothersome, even though you can adjust that in post. You know, it saves time just being able to shoot the crop you want right out the bat. Um, but, yeah, it was just like a little, it was very com kind of cumbersome. Yeah, but I think, and for me with the video, you know, we reached a couple of things where I wanted just better quality, like better low light, especially. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be able to use full frame, like lenses um, on a full frame sensor, whereas the Micro Four Thirds sensor in the Lumix GH5. Um do like slower motion you know we were shooting at 60 frames a lot i went to uh, 120. so th that was kind of like looking at it from those different perspectives and then mm -hmm. also we kind of wanted to have a single right. camera system so we use the same batteries across all of it mm -hmm. you know we can use lenses across all of them mm -hmm. um and just kind of like make things easier and get rid of a bunch of gear so given all that you know we were looking for a system and I won't go into too much detail why, why we landed on the ones we did, but we got the, for the video, we got the Sony FX3, and for the photo, we got the Sony A7R4. So, oh, good to know. Those are the two bodies, and so far, we just got the Sony 24 to 70 2.8 lens. Um, but what was your. Um, how did you feel about like potentially, you know, not continuing the Canon route and switching systems completely? Because sure, focusing issues occasionally aside and things like that, um, I would say we both really enjoyed the like camera, you know, the mm -hmm. camera systems we were using both on the Lumix and the Canon mm -hmm. side. So was there any anxiety about switching and kind of like, what were your thoughts kind of like before you, before we switched? Yeah, I really didn't want to switch Yeah. at all. Um... I was, it's like when you get like super attached to something and you just like can't let it go and you're like, but the focusing issues are fine. I can deal with it. But no, it was really getting in the way. And I think like when I'd used like a Sony previously, it was like, oh, this like menu system is so confusing. But like, it's like, how often do you actually go into the menu? Like on, when, on a shooting camera, like on a photo camera, um, every once in a while. And also just the... You right. get very familiar with all the buttons on a Canon, and like I think that's all just very. It just makes like a lot of sense. Um, I remember like when I would shoot before you switch your Nikon to a Canon, the dials were like oh God, different yeah. for shutter speed Backwards, versus yeah. aperture, so that was like so silly. So it's just your your mind and your fingers and your hand just like know the buttons that you need to hit when you need to change that setting. So that was like, uh, like having to learn that, but like it's totally fine and. When we, we did, we took the camera out for just like a little test run yeah. when we first got it, which was fine, which was fun. And, but then when we shot the watches, that was like, um, really kind of shooting with it professionally and, and it ended up being really great. Uh, one thing was that the, the, the screen was like so dark at first. I was like, I can't see anything. And it was so bright and we'd have to like look inside to see the images. Yeah. And then I was like, this has to be a setting thing, right? And then eventually we got it brighter. So turn up your screen, people. It'll help. Um, but it was very easy. I think I just need to spend more time with it. I've only yeah. shot with it like twice now. I just need to get more uh, acquainted with like where ISO is and the various um, sort of like focusing abilities and stuff because it has the face tracking now, mm -hmm. which hopefully will be super helpful with portraits. So I'm excited to actually get out and do some real portraits with it. It'll yeah. No, and I've, so I was pretty like open to switching and, you know, just people who follow on YouTube and others, mm -hmm. like, I, th I think one of the things you realize is like all cameras these days are pretty good. So mm -hmm. it's really about those, like what you use it for and why, like obviously how much you want to spend. Um, so 
we're still kind of building out the full kit of everything. There's kind of like orders arriving right. for different gear. Oh yeah, especially um, for the video camera. Yeah, so once we get it all together, we're, we'll kind of do a video showing off like the new setups. I can't wait to watch that video. <laughs> learn, learn all about it. So yeah, I think that's it for now. But if you have any questions for us about- Wait, can I just yeah. say one more thing? So because the resolution is so high, this is what I wanted to talk about. On the Sony camera, like, like the 60, detail pixels, yeah. was like, crazy um because i was shooting watches on eugene's wrist i was getting um a lot of like the detail in his skin like seeing all of his like pores and all the little cracks in the skin and I mean, whatever was, like the thread on the shirt yeah the so thread much. on the shirt um was just like immaculate but it was like a little tricky to edit um so i'm just gonna need to keep practicing with that like yeah. using the spot healing brush um it's not as easy to kind of blend those different um, surfaces, basically, because yeah. um, there's just so much more detail. So, like when you're like cloning something, it's just more obvious where the clone part starts yeah. and the original image begins, kind of. So, so that's going to take like a little bit of practice, and just hopefully won't get too frustrated with it. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, the other thing is that we're selling a lot of our old gear, and we've actually sold all the Canon cameras now, which yeah. is wild, like, that the 5D Mark III's are still reselling for, we sold them for, like, $800 Canadian each, mm -hmm. but um, we also, someone tried to scam us on Kijiji, so definitely watch out. If you're selling your own gear, uh, I mean, highly recommend that you do it, but uh, make sure you're safe, and if anything looks weird, maybe, like, ask a friend or... Google like literally Google the what the people are writing to you because yeah. often they're using the same script over and over again. So I was thinking of putting together a video about kind of like some common scams uh, that people who sell, you know, photo gear or just electronics uh, encounter. So if that's something you would think would be helpful. Please uh, let me know in the comments below. The last thing to mention is that all of the things uh, you should think about when kind of switching systems is all of the things that are associated with that. So that might be having to get new cables, you know, new cases, batteries, memory cards, memory card readers, even going from, you know, 30 megapixels or whatever it was that we were using to 60. Uh, we now need more hard drive space, more backup space. Um, need to upgrade your computer. Oh my gosh, so, yeah. Just like seeing how long it was going to take to like copy some files over to a hard drive or onto the desktop. I was like, why is this taking so long? But it's because the files are double the size. So yeah, that's, and that's, you know, that's something important to keep in mind too when I go back to shooting events or like anything that's like numerous yeah. images because you're shooting a lot of candids, maybe adjusting the file size or something, trying to navigate that. Yeah, so luckily you yeah. can sell a lot of this stuff and make a lot of that money back, but that also requires quite a bit of work. <laughs> you're um, putting it off. So yeah. yeah, definitely don't put it off, yeah. but it's also fine. Um, yeah. I mean, so yeah. You, you were so fancy. You took all those nice product photos of it. Yeah. So With our new light. worked out. Oh. But yeah, that's all about our cameras. So let's move on to the next segment. It's time for Zing Zap. Zing Zap. If you're new here, which most of you probably are, considering it's only our second episode. Yeah. But Zing Zap is our awkwardly named quick Q&A segment. And if you have any recommendations for a better title, please let us know. And so we're gonna dive into our zigzag box. Last time it was a glowing bag, but we've ditched the light and we've gotten a beautiful wooden box that I made in a woodworking class. Yes, yes. This was the start of Eugene's uh, new woodworking career before the pandemic hit and he could no longer go to the workshop. Yeah, look, now we have flat lay styling box. Oh my God. So we're gonna dive in and see what questions are in the zigzag zap box. <laughs> zing zap. Glitchy there, zing zap. Um, but if you have any questions for us, drop them in the comments below or send us a DM on Instagram. We're at worker be supply and we'll catch them in the next episode. Yeah. And they don't have to be like serious or like business questions or like creativity questions. They can be silly questions too, because you don't know what you're going to get when you do zing zap. It could be anything. So yeah, put them in the comments. We'll add them to the box. All right. Okay. Should How many you? are we doing? I don't know. Let's do it. Let's see how long they take. All right. Oh, all right. This box is very satisfying. Cake or pie? Oh, that's easy. Cake. 
Cake is amazing. <clears throat> Cake is amazing. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, pie was something I resisted a lot as a child. Um, cake is so clearly more delicious um, because it has icing and cake, the cake itself is so good. But I admit now as an adult, honestly, I think it may have been because of you, because you enjoy pie. Um, I have opened up um, pie and I accept all pies now. Um, cherry, strawberry, rhubarb, apple. It's great. So... I'm going to say pie. Oh, okay. I do love cake, so it's the closest. But I was thinking, <sighs> would I rather have, like, my favorite cake? It's cheesecake. Like, oh, you I do like, say, a like cheesecake? Ra raspberry cheesecake, probably. Raspberry. Um, okay. But then I love a strawberry rhubarb pie, so yes, I was thinking, yeah. of, like, raspberry cheesecake, strawberry rhubarb pie. Yeah. I think I'll go for the pie because it has the, like, liquidy goodness. It has the burst of the juices, yeah. but then it has that, like, flaky crust, and I just love a good pastry, so... That's true. You are a pastry man. Yeah. I think with cake also, um, it just automatically makes me think of birthdays. Um, could be my birthday. could be someone else's birthday. So it was definitely like a very special treat to look forward to um, once a year. Have you ever made a pie? I've never made a pie. We have not gone into the pie territory We've made yet. a bunch of cakes yes. last year. Yes. That was they very fun. They turned out awesome. Yeah. That was but, great. Um, and it's coming up to our like birthday month. Mm -hmm. So, because we have a birthday in the same month. So we just make cakes throughout it. I know. It's great. Starting last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll make a cheesecake this year or maybe we'll do a pie. Awesome. All right. Okay. That's cake or pie. Next. I told you they could be silly. All right. Would you go to a movie alone? Oh. I think I've been to a movie alone once. Oh. And it was like, I was in New York. I don't know if I was just like uh, on a trip with my parents and I was in the city by myself. Like my uncle lived in New Jersey. Oh, okay. Um, but I went to see Saw. Okay. Like one of the Saw movies. Yeah, yeah. I think Saw 3 probably. In like the Times Square movie theater, like na next to Madame Tussauds, like Wax Museum. Um, and that's the only time I think I've seen a movie alone. But normally I probably wouldn't. Okay, I've gone to lots of movies by myself. And that's like, it's something I started doing in university because um, our university, Ryerson, was right beside a movie theater. So as I was going home, um, I would check and see if there were any like decent movies playing. And if there was something that caught my eye and I had enough time, I would then go back to the student center and get a discounted student movie ticket which was good for any movie. And then I would go back to the theater and waltz in and enjoy a movie. Nice. Um, and then that's something that I also carried into my time while I was living in Scotland because I had, I spent a lot of time on my own in Scotland, but they also had some like really adorable, small vintage movie theaters there. And you could get like a nice glass of wine and bring that in. Um, and I had a friend there who was really into movies. So he kind of introduced me to that whole scene, but I would just, it was just something to do like when I was by myself. So, and they would usually play a lot of independent films nice. as well. Um, so it's something I really enjoy, but it's funny because when I watch a movie by myself at home, I find that I'm not like necessarily in it. Um, and I get like easily distracted. And then if I watch it again with someone else, I seem to like enjoy it so much more, but I've seen a lot of movies by myself. Cool. It's nice. I definitely also took advantage of the Ryerson discounted. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're in school, like, check out the student union organization or whatever. Yeah. There's, like, discounts for all the stuff that you're totally missing out on. Like, I know. Things it's that great. you get all the time. Yeah. No, I remember I definitely saw Up um, at the cool. time. Don't really like that movie. But anyway, continue. This is a long question. Are, when people stand up for a standing ovation, mm -hmm. are you usually one of the earlier people to stand mm -hmm. or one of the latter? I'd say earlier, probably. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm all for, like, showing praise to yeah. things that are awesome. Yeah. And, like, I feel there's a fine line between standing up, like, you can't stand up too early unless it's, like, a really bad show and you're, like, the only one standing up. Mm. But anywhere from, like, the second person to the whatever, let's say, middle, after that, you're, like, the grumpy person with, like, everyone standing around yeah. you and, like, what are you doing? Why are you here? Yeah. So you got to, like, avoid that side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And, like, I prefer to stick to the front. 
Yeah, no, I'm I'm right up there. Like, I got to show that appreciation right off the bat. And uh, and you know, if I really enjoyed the show, I'm 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 pumped up. I'm energized. So I'm like, I got to show the love for the for the cast and for the musicians involved, and the conductor. And uh, and you know, there's some people in the audience who might be a little bit shy. So you got to like encourage them too to get up and start clapping. So I'm up there. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm doing it right away. Should we do one more question? Yeah. All right. These are all very silly today. Let's do it. Uh, oh, it's my turn. All right. This one's going to be super serious. I can do it. What are your hidden talents? Oh. See, I guess this is kind of a hidden talent. I used to do a lot of extreme sports as a kid. Um, you know, I started skiing when I was, like, super young, maybe, like, three or four years old. Um, I would do downhill mountain biking, I would do skateboarding, like rollerblading. um, I even did trampoline competitively. I was gonna say, don't forget about the trampoline. For a while. Oh yeah. So, I think, like, my hidden talents is, like, I just have good kind of balance and kind of, like, practical body skills like that. So, often yeah. any kind of, like, new sport or something like that, or weird activity, like, we did that thing, uh, the jet, like, feet thing. Yeah. What is that called? Jet boarding. Yeah. Um. So much fun. It like comes pretty like easy to me, mm -hmm. um, or like I can kind of figure it out pretty quickly. So maybe that's my hidden talent. Okay, I'll think. I'll I'll try to see if I can think of yeah. any more for you. But for me, um, I can whistle through my bottom teeth. Um, I'm also pretty good at impressions, um, so I can do like accents like fairly well. Um, but I can also just like repeat voices, um, pretty quickly, I would say. Um, but, but yeah, like I can do like, um, I could do British accent all right if, uh, if you don't mind. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's kind of hidden talent for me. Do, do you think of anything else? I mean, like I can juggle. Um, I mean, I, yeah, maybe those do like each other's. Like, I think one of your hidden talents is like being able to talk to almost anyone. Okay. Um, oh, like you. you're very... You know, whether we're in line at an airport, at like a bar, or at a store somewhere, or maybe just on a streetcar or a random person on the street, uh, you can usually strike up a conversation and kind of like make a nice personal connection with almost anyone you meet. And I really like look up to that. And, Thank you. And impressed by it. Yeah. Um, and for you, hmm, hidden talent. Oh, I know. You're like very, well, you're like a very um, handy person. So, and you're really interested in that. So you really like to take, take things apart. Mm -hmm. And I was even thinking like on our coffee grinder, the, oh, yeah, the yeah. on and off button was already like had come loose. And then eventually I pushed the whole thing right into the machine. Um, and I was like, I'm not too concerned. Eugene will probably be able to fix this and I knew he would be excited to do it too. And so later that evening you took it apart and you you fixed it. I think you also fixed like our old TV. Mm -hmm. You tried to fix a heater but that didn't work. Yeah. You almost ruined your phone in the process though with the soldering, soldering iron. iron. Um, but you really like like being hands on. Um, and I think that lends well to, you haven't used it yet, but like the Apple, or sorry, the Raspberry Pi system, mm -hmm. building um, model kits. And um, even like fixing up bikes and yeah. building your computer too. Like you're just very handy and hands-on like that. Yeah, it's fun. I wish I could so, do more. Yeah, I know. It's a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's fun. So yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. Episode two of Creative Chit Chat. It's I, all done. I think that's um, one of the things we want to do is kind of bring people on yeah. maybe in our like deep dive segment and have guests. Yeah. I just hang out, hang out with us for the whole time, but mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, can speak to a specific topic. Yeah. But if you're interested in participating or there's topics you want us to cover on it, or like we said earlier, you have any questions at all, whether they be about work or life, anything in between. Balance. No, I'm kidding. Imbalance. Let us know what you got down in the comments and we'll do our best to answer it for you. But if you would enjoyed this video, do us a big favor, hit that thumbs up, and make sure yes, you hit please. subscribe. We're releasing a video almost weekly. Yeah, so you can Get also hit it. the bell so that you don't miss any of our videos when they come out. And yeah, we'll and see yeah. you in the next one then. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you have a lovely June, and we'll catch you uh, in July, I guess. Oh my. What do you think? 
I think we'll catch them in June still. Well, for the next creative chit chat, though. Deal. All right. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.